All right, here we go. Another edition of the Knicks Fan TV podcast. CP from Knicks Fan TV. Salute to Knicks Nation worldwide. Today's guest, he's a man that wears multiple hats in this digital media content creation game. He's produced content for various outlets, including New York's own Hot 97 and Bleacher Report. And he's a diehard Knicks fan, man. Jeff Johnson. Jeff, how you doing today, man? Chilling, bro. Thanks for coming on, man. How you how you feel, man? I, I never I never really just sat down and mm-hmm. talked Knicks with you. I know you're a diehard Knicks fan. It's another lost season, but how how you feeling about this team right now? Man, you know, you gotta Yeah, I talk to my therapist a lot. Yeah. And you gotta be able to uh let go and appreciate the bright side of things. Yeah. And I think with this team, I've kind of untied my emotions to them over the last probably decade and looked at it from a very pragmatic point of view. So for me, I I didn't have high hopes. I just wanted them to be competitive, be competitive and be a functioning, regular basketball organization. That's all I wanted. I didn't care about big names. I didn't care about back page headlines. Just be a functional organization and show people that the structure is sound and things are normal here. Mm. And I feel like we've gotten that more over the last 11, 12 games since Mike Miller has come on than everything that happened prior. Like everything that happened prior is the right. right. Mm. Everything that happened prior is is peak Knicks, right? Peak Knicks. Like we, we probably were one, we probably were a bad trade away from peak Knicks. Right. But I wish it was like this the whole the whole season where they were competing. If they lost, they lost. But mm-hmm. it's you give that hope that there's some type of sound foundation in place to build on for yeah. the future. But um, over the last few games, I've liked what I see. It's it's competitive basketball for the most part. Like mm-hmm. they they played the teams that's actually supposed to blow them out, and like nine out of ten of them actually did. But against everybody else. They showed signs. Like, they showed signs. They finally have uh, something that looks like uh, offensive identity, mm-hmm. a better defense, um, and people are just hooping now, you know? And I think I think you can – you don't have to attribute the um, the actual play to the new coach bump. Like, we're past that now. Yeah. They're actually, like, hooping now. So, so what's up? Yeah, it's good. I, I think it's a little bit of uh, chemistry, and I think it's definitely the impact of Mike Miller. I mean, he's 6-10 and 10 with the team right now. Mm-hmm. Like you, I wanted to see a competitive season. Obviously, I wasn't looking at, you know, playoffs or anything like that, nothing crazy. I mean, Vegas had this team hovering around 28 wins. I'd be lucky if they get there right now. Right now, they're 10-28. and 28. Yeah, uh, and I think they should. As the team was c- constituted... I think 28 was not unrealistic. Yeah. It to was me, better it than what did they win? 17, they 14, 17, 17, 17 right? Year. Yo, I think they could have got plus 10. Yeah. I think they could have got plus 10 before everything else that happened. But last year's team is looking better than this year's team. <sighs> yeah, and it's and that's scary. That's saying something. That's man. scary. Yeah, that, that's saying something. I mean, last night they played the Utah Jazz. Moody A went off off the bench, 20 points, like eight times. He was, you know, he had his revenge game. He was going off on them. But um, that's know, an indictment on the Knicks too. Why yeah. wasn't he hooping like that here? He might have been ready. The, are we developing people correctly? Like, what's going on? The question is development, especially when you're looking at this core that we have right now. I think in the case of Moody, I think what it was was he did show signs of talent here. I think number one, he looks like he's in much better shape with Utah. Mm. Um, I, his problem with the Knicks, he couldn't finish drives, and I just yeah. think on a team that was that bad and where he wanted and had to do that much, I think his flaws were exposed. Mm. You know what I mean? On his Utah team, he's coming off the bench. He's backing up Conley. He's backing up Donovan Mitchell, Gobert. Like, that's their team. Right. So he can kind of come in, find his niche. Get in where he fit in. Get in where he fit in. Where here, you saw, I mean, fourth quarter last year, you know, it was held to skelter. He was trying to win the game in in one possession. So, But it, 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 it goes back to, like you said, development. Mm. I think, and as you look at it from a from a high level, from a macro level, we have to see if we have that foundation in place to really start to groom these kids. I mean, on my show, we do a nightly post game show, and you know, a lot of the fan base they they they're down on Kevin Knox, they're down on Frank. You know, they feel like these kids aren't performing up to speed, but at the same time, they they're young. Yeah. You know, Kevin Knox is twenty, Frank is twenty one, RJ's eighteen. The next kid coming in, it's you know, they're getting younger. Eighteen, nineteen, <laughs> right? Yeah. So. We got to be in it for the long haul. I just hope that we have the the foundation in place that can really nurture these kids into something good. Yeah, and, and you know, 
as the years go on and in this in this era right now, instant gratification reigns supreme, right? So if we don't see signs early because everybody's coming out younger, you want younger kids, that means they should be on a development track yeah. faster. But I do think that I would caution the Knicks fan base, or I should say, I, I always call them the independent republic of Knicks fans because the other <laughs> Knicks fans, the people who are rational, that's not the fan base that yeah. I'm about. I'm in the independent republic of Knicks fans. We right. are a sovereign nation <laughs> of sensible sports the fans. Free thinkers. We're the New York sports fans that people really talk no, about, that's a fact. not that's the a fact. other people that just come into the fan base to troll, no. right? So having said that, what if people would have dismissed Giannis when he first came that's into the, the league? Yeah. And I am not calling Kevin Knox right, right, Giannis, right. but what if? Yeah, there was a point where he was just an athletic, lanky dude who could dunk, who could who could play some defense, but you didn't know what type of jumper he was gonna get. Facts. You didn't know that he could dribble like that. Mm -hmm. The fact that he could euro step from half court and dunk it on you <laughs> in two steps, in two steps, two steps from the other side. I never saw that. And yeah. anybody who says that they did is either a, a someone from the future or they're capping. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it it's partially the development that you get in the organization, and what you do on your own. Sure. I think that's an aspect that a lot of people forget. You have to put in the work yourself. Yeah. You have to be that person that will hire who you need to hire, put the work in the weight room, put the work mm -hmm. in in the gym, come back. I remember when you when we used to hoop every summer um, at, at, in high school, whatever, it was ill to come back to school and see people's new moves. Like, like people would have yeah. new moves. You're like, oh, so where did you get what that you're from? Working on, right? Like, oh, you got a jumper now? Yeah. Word? Oh, yeah. Damn, I, now I got to guard you. Like, facts, I got to really facts. guard you for real. And that's how, in the NBA, it's another level because the same people that, that fans clown would run all of us off the court. Yeah, you know what sure, I'm saying? Sure. These are professionals. So yeah. at a high, the highest level in the world, you have to keep raising your, your level. Sure. Having said that, I think Frank has turned a lot of people around. Because the beginning of the season, it was spooky. Yeah, it, it was. It, it was if you, especially coming off the FIBA, the World Championships, he right. had a solid showing. Right, came into the season a little bit flat. Right, last couple of games on the Miller, he's, he's he's been looking all right. Yeah, and he, he you know, he'll never lose his defense. Right, that's the one thing that he's like nigh elite in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So with him, I don't really worry. Like if Frank gets a consistent outside jumper or somebody in uses the mentality to just go in the paint and destroy what you see, I think he'll be fine. That's a dude that if a team comes to me like, let me think, who, who's like middle of the road, um, shoot, uh, Oklahoma City, mm. um, Clippers, someone like a Clippers, somebody who who may be a piece, like piece or two away, um, Denver, someone yeah. like that comes and asks about Frank, I'm like, you ever heard the, the Master P quote? If, if somebody offers you a million dollars, you're wondering like, whether or not you wor it's worth $10 <laughs> yeah, million. Right, dollars. Right, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. how I look at it with Frank. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you gotta, He's the quintessential, I go to another team and I, yeah, I become he's a elite. a glue guy. Yeah, glue no, I'm guy. saying he could go to another team and then in a year or two, they're clowning the Knicks for giving him away. Yeah. When those same people were clowning him for being on the Knicks. But this is the Knicks paradox. You know that what I mean? Paradox, when, when people are here, they stink. When people leave, they're the greatest <laughs> they thing flourish. on earth. But that's just why because we, we got to have yeah. that, that patience, man. We can't, you know, I'm, I'm constantly talking to callers, trying to talk them off the ledge. they like, oh, Kev, he's terrible, this, that, and third. I'm Kev, like, ain't, Kev ain't helping it. He's not helping it. Don't get me wrong. I'm he's saying. not helping <laughs> it. But I'm like, you know, you, we got to have patience with these kids, man. You got to water the seeds and, and see what happens. It's, it's a long-term view. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the problem with, with in rebuilding in New York is that we do want to rebuild, but we want to rebuild overnight. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it doesn't happen overnight that way. How about RJ? What's been your impressions of RJ this season? Yo, RJ gets better to me. Like, he's had, he had like a little, I think after the first 10 games, that middle stretch where he was <laughs> off. Um, I know the knock on him is that he can't shoot, but from what I see, everything else that he's doing, I'm not worried about him developing an outside shot. Yeah, that's gonna come because he's a gym rat. Back to yeah. what you said, that that's the thing about RJ. Why well, I'm not concerned either because he's gonna work. Yeah, and and that type of stuff is stuff that you can correct. Facts. What you can't teach is that tenac that tenacity and that intensity to go to the hoop, like go to the rack, meet people at the rim. Mm -hmm. And that boy is strong, man. Boy, strong, like he's man. strong. Like that I see strong. him going in. Like, you remember when, when LeBron first came in the league and mm -hmm. it was like once he puts his head down, it's quiet. It's either an offensive foul or you're getting little brother to the 
rim. Yeah. RJ has these moves where he drives, especially when he's on, on his left, he drives in, holds you off with the shoulder, yeah, and goes in. And it's yep. just like grown man, yeah. grown man status. Like, that's the type of stuff that I like. I think... He's been on the business end of a few game winners where you just make that one. It's like that, oh, shit. Like when somebody yeah. makes that one, you're like, oh, yeah. and then they hit the shot. Tatum, Tatum caught him. And, Kyrie but that's caught a, him. But, but that's a, a good man. move. I think Kyrie, I was upset because I'm like, everybody in the building knows what he's going to do. Just, just like when you know LeBron, LeBron LeBron is dribbling and he looks down and yeah. they're like, yo, he's looking. He's going to yeah. pull. He's going to pull. Like we know back. he's hitting the step back. But some people are just great where you know it's coming yeah. and you can't, can't stop, stop it. it. But RJ, I... I'm not going to lie. I wanted Zion. I wanted Zion 100%. And I wanted John Morant, too. Because John, I saw problem, John man. Morant. I went to the opening round of the NCAA um, tournament. where I, I think he's, he was on Murray State, mm-hmm. right? When, when um, I forgot who they played, but he, he annihilated them, yeah, right? And when I, so when I saw that, I was like, yo, he's going to be he's a ready. player. So, mm-hmm. I, so when I was telling the fan base, we all want Zion, but I wouldn't be mad at Durant, uh, Morant. Yeah. Like, Why are you being so negative? Da, da, da. We got to get number one pick. <laughs> Look at John Morant now. Dude, I love RJ. I, I got love for RJ, but yeah. would you like John Morant on your well, team? Yes or no? A, a floor general for so long, man. John Morant, is, he's, he's going to take the league by storm. And no he would dunk it on Jesus if he was of in the course, Of course, of course. So... He, he he almost demolished. Who's that? Kevin Love. He almost ended Kevin Love's career. Kevin Love <laughs> was, at was one half inch away from being in highlight infamy. <laughs> yeah. at streaming services that aren't even here yet. Like when they're beaming it into our brain, yeah. you would have Kevin Love would have been living in on replay. Did, did you? What was the reaction? Did you guys edit that that highlight? I mean, did you guys put your own spin on it, or um, no? Nah, I don't. You kind of just from what I remember, I don't think we put. We just put. We posted it like. John Moreno was called a body. Like, yeah. Kevin Love is... like, And we posted... I think we 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 covered Kevin Love's reaction right, and everything right, like right. that and what he posted on Twitter, but we didn't we didn't um, do any edits. Any and from what I remember, from what I saw, we didn't do any edits besides that, but yeah. that was a moment. Like, yeah. when I... I was... I, I forgot where I was, and I saw it, and I was like, man. That's John the one where you come back to man. the bench and your boys are telling you, like, Dog, you escaped. Yeah. You escaped a moment. Man, man. I, I can't wait till we find our point guard of the future, man. I don't know who it's going to be. Who? I mean, you covered, you know, the brackets in college basketball last year. Have you been watching this year? What's your early Bro, impression? Bro, I don't watch until March Madness. No, I get about 100. Right? I don't watch. Yeah. I, I don't know nobody until March Madness, yeah. bro. But, but from what I'm seeing, um, you know, uh, LaMelo is doing work mm-hmm. out in um, – Australia. New Zealand, yeah, New Zealand, Australia. Australia, Australia, whatever that that area, and uh, it is New Zealand the NBA, NBL. Mm-hmm. He's doing he's doing a lot of work, and my man, my man's name, I am dumbing, but um, Cole Anthony yeah. from UNC, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, like that dude has had a buzz, and I think he might have been injured or he something. Injured. Like he yeah, got injured, injured right? Because I because I know they um they're like eight and six now because I think Roy Williams went on and was like we're not a talented team, and yeah. I'm like damn. Damn, coach. But um, <laughs> those were the two names that I heard buzzing a lot. Yeah. So who knows? Yeah, Lamelo's definitely got that. He, he's got that generational court vision, man. I mean, he he's gonna be a problem when he gets to this league. And what I like about him is, at every level that Lavar has pushed him into, he's excelling. Mm-hmm. And he's a young eighteen, man. He skipped he skipped a year of high school, mm-hmm. went over to Lithuania with his brother, yep. so he's been playing pro. Yeah. Went over to Spy Institute. You know, another top program, and then went to the NBL. So, you know, he's playing like a, a kid amongst men. Yeah. But he's playing like a man amongst boys, though. He's dominating, man. He, he's dominating. Um, another topic that, that's been hot on the show has been Marcus Morris. Okay. Having a great season, career year, especially under on the Fizz and Mike Miller. He's coming, doing, saying all the right things, leading this team, leading the youngsters. I like what Morris brings to the team. Uh, the, the debate now is Keep do you him trade time. him? Try to get an asset in here that you can continue to build with, yeah. or do you try to keep them and sign them in the offseason? Saying all the right things, I want to be a Nick, blah blah blah. What do you do? Um. So the question you ask yourself is: He's on a one-year deal, right? Mm-hmm. Expiring at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Y'all gonna sign him for big money next year because he ain't doing another one-year deal. Yeah. I wouldn't if I was Marcus Morris. Yeah. He's balling at, right at now. his age. You gotta right. go for multi-year, deal. right? He's not doing another multi-year deal. I mean, he's not doing another one-year deal. He's more than proved that he's an, a valuable asset to any team. Mm-hmm. So if I'm the Knicks, 
you want to get the maximum value because if he stays past the deadline, you're going to have to pay him. Right. So then the question is going to be, should we tie up X amount of dollars? Because then what is he? What is he? Out? Do you know? I don't know off the top of my head how old how old Mark is. More? He's 30. He's 30, he's right? He's 30, yeah. So he's probably looking for four four sixty. Probably. 460, 350, well, probably. something like that. He's right. going to get a raise. He's right. 15 right now. Right. So then yeah. let's say over three years, he's probably looking for at least 50 mil. He's looking for the bag, yeah. right? Are you going to give Marcus Morris $50 million in 2020, um, 2021, right? It's a costly proposition, man. Are you going to do that? And and if the and the elephant is and, and the elephant in the room is we don't even know if this front office is going to be here next right, year. That's the thing. Who's, so, who's making the so having said all of that, he's actually in in probably one of the best positions because he he can benefit one way or another. I don't know if the Knicks organization would be in the best position. So, I would I would say personally, if this was a regular normal functioning organization, I would say with the position they're in. They have to listen to offers, yeah, gotcha. but I would. But I want to get a good, an above yeah, average you're not just offer. Giving them away. You you're get not getting good. a second round pick. Yeah. You're not getting cash considerations. We're not taking um, player X's bloated contract or whatever. No, mm-hmm. you're giving us a first rounder, and and you're sending somebody else or something like that. Like yeah. maybe like another expiring contract. Right, right. That's it. If you cannot get that, then keep them. That, yeah, straight I up, give them away. Straight up, I definitely wouldn't give him away. But like you, I, I think they it would behoove them to try to get get a deal for mm-hmm. him because you just don't know. Players talk all the time. But at the end of the day, money talks. Now the Knicks are in, are in a uh, advantageous situation because they can give him a one year, you know, front loaded contract like they did this year. Right. But like you said, for a guy thirty years old who's probably playing on his last deal, he's gonna want to want that security. He's gonna want a multi year deal. So. It's a tricky situation, and then, like you said, on top of that, who's going to be here right now? I'm not so sure, man. Yeah, you know, I'm not so sure. Um, let, let's take it back in the day, man. Like, take it back to what made you become a diehard Knicks fan. Like, what were some of your earliest memories of of the orange and blue, and why and why you became a fan? All right. So when I started, I started playing basketball like in junior high, right? Like, not in junior, not, yeah, 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 that is junior high. So, like, like sixth grade, seventh grade, I started playing playing basketball, and when I was getting into it, I was actually watching basketball because, you know, I was a big, I was a big baseball fan at the time, big football fan, and basketball was, like, at the time, like, I liked playing it. Like, I liked playing it in the gym, like, mm-hmm. the most. Um, and it was, like, creeping up in my my power rankings of sports that I love. Like, now basketball is number one. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I was playing and then I was like, OK, you know, I, I watched the basketball. I was casual. Like as a fan, I was casual. My father, he rooted for all the New York team. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where I got my fandom from. Mm-hmm. So when I was watching basketball, who was the most at the time really transcends it. But the Lakers were always on. Yeah. Lakers always on. And Magic Johnson like towards the end of his career, like Magic Johnson was one of my 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 favorite players to watch, mm-hmm. and you know we had like similar last names, so I was like, yo, you know I, I like Magic I'm or whatever, cousin. <laughs> right, right, right. I, I could be his cousin, like you know, some, someone in, on 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 the plantation somewhere down the line yeah, met yeah. us, and then we got splintered okay, or whatever, splinted right, all. right. Yeah. So so it was at that time, like I was watching him, whatever, and it's funny to say it, but I didn't have awareness of the Knicks. Yeah. Because they weren't as publicized. Like you think about it today with the way media, how sophisticated media is mm-hmm. now. They got MSG network. There's you have um, social media, all of that. Like there's no way not to have awareness of a team. But you know, in the in the nineties or whatever, it was a little bit different. So, so I, you know, it was one time where I was watching, and it was straight like this. Uh, I used to root for Magic Johnson as a player, right? I was watching, I think I was watching um, the Knicks and the Bulls play. And and I was like, yo, it's New York. It's a New York team. Mm-hmm. Yo, that's my team. Like, that's got to be my team. Yeah. So, like, my my early memories was that, that, Ewing, that Ewing era. Mm-hmm. Like, that 90s, we were in black kicks in the, in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Hard nose. Shave head. To come, yeah, shave head. 
You know, mate, mate's got the new design every mm-hmm, week mm-hmm. in his head. You come to the rim, you may not make it back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If we don't, if we don't win the game, we win in the fight. Yeah, like that's my New York Knickerbockers, mm-hmm. right? So that's like some of my early memories. So with those early memories, I have like the tragic trauma, PTSD of some of the playoff memories. But yeah. that was like my early memory. Like once, once I, I started watching them and I'm like yo this team is representing my city like that's the type of fan I am like I know there's a lot of people out there who are player fans and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and will support players outside of the city that they came up in and they grew up in I'm not like that I support my city I support my teams like now I do support players and I I root for them but I root for my my city's teams like that's just how I am so I've been with them ever since like ups and downs I've been with them ever since same here man and as you said you know it was those storylines from those series you know Knicks Bulls Knicks Pacers Knicks Heat unscripted drama every night like you said they put the city on their back every night they came in they was representing that jersey and and you just felt that you felt that through the TV that that these guys all five of these guys in this court every night they was going to leave it out there blood sweat and tears and it was like this is this is us. Like they representing us. You know That's what I mean? Fact. They want to win for us. Yeah. And then you had the villains. It was MJ, obviously Reggie. You know Alonzo and Patrick with Miami Heat. Tim Hardaway. It, you know the, the days was crazy. Then when Riley left, you know when Riley left, I was still Riley left like ninety five. So I was about ten. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you just starting to really become more sophisticated on the game. But I didn't really understand, like, you know, this is our coach. Like, what's going on here? Right, like, right, right. We just went to the finals. Right. Like, where, where you, you just going? Left? Where you, you going? Like, <laughs> yeah, you just left. And then, you know, he goes to Miami, he makes a carbon copy of the Knicks. And then it was just straight war for, like, the next five years after exactly. that. And, and so the, those, those are the good old days, man. Who who's the player, you know, from, from the time they got rid of you until now has been nothing but, you know, yeah, sprinkling mellow Knicks tape and stuff. We had, we had some runs there, but... It, there was always some some trash bag players that that they had on there in the court, but sometimes you would stand for him like, "Yo, he's got potential, man!" Like, who who was that player for you? Like, who was one of those players that never made it t- on the team or never made it, you know, that far? But you were like, "Yo, I think he's got potential to be good for this team." Man, yo, that's a real good question. You know what? I was hoping that that. We could like summon the dragon, the get the gather the dragon balls and summon the dragon and heal Tracy McGrady. That one <laughs> night, that one yo, night. that what he gave <laughs> us, yo. <laughs> yeah. God bless him. He gave us one night where that I was, was it, like, man. yo, we got T back. We might, yeah, the debut. Was debut I was like, yo, OKC T back might be back. <laughs> yeah. And then my man turned into a pumpkin. But um, yo, that one night I was like. He he took all his power for one <laughs> night. He had left, everything he had he left for MSG, one man. night and left it at MSG, Facts. man. I, I'm trying to think because, like, yo, those dark. You talking like the Some the Mar- days, the man. Marty Collins yeah, era, Rose. the Malik Rose. Yeah, it's like Mike oh, Sweet. Who did we? Oh God, Antonio <laughs> McDice. <laughs> oh, like that's probably him. Yeah. Like yeah, I yeah. thought McDice could come here and, and get over the micro fracture mm-hmm, and, and mm-hmm. ball out, and it just did not happen. Never, never like happened, when we man. got when we got um, washed Penny. Yeah. When we got well, Penny washed, was my favorite player. Yo, so when bro. they made the trade, I was yeah. still. Hype, Steve but I knew Francis. he was wise. Oh, man. Uh, uh, Larry Brown man? thought Steve Francis and Marbury could be the next Frazier Monroe, man. That was a disaster. They got rid of Ariza for him. Yeah. There you go. Bro. Back to development. Yeah. They got rid yeah. of a young Ariza. Yeah. They get Steve Francis. And then Francis. they have um, Katino Mobley. They had Katino. One, Katino one had the heart issue. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So he, he I, don't, I'm not, I don't even remember if he ended up playing because of the, the heart he issue. Played, I think he, he played a trade. little bit, and then when they found it, yeah. they were like, no, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he went to big three and balled out. Mm-hmm. My, um, I, I stand for all the point guards that came after Steph. You know, Teray Murray. We had uh, Frank Williams. Wow. We had a dude named Frank Williams that we yeah, drafted out of yeah. University of Illinois. Uh, uh, my guy, though, was um, this dude named Earl Barron. Oh, Earl, I remember Earl Barron, the yeah. third. The third, Earl right? Earl, he, wasn't he like the third? Yeah. Like Earl Barron three, right? Yeah. Earl Barron was a big man. They signed him to a 10-day contract. This was in 2009, 2010 season. And I was just like, yo, who's this dude, Earl Barron? Because they brought him up in April, like, by the end. Yo, Earl Barron came in and had, like, first game had 15. Next game had, like, 18 points, 18 boards. I'm like... 
oh, we got a little gem here, man. So then he made his second 10-day contract, and then they just stopped playing him after, like, six games. Bro. Right. Earl Barron was one of those guys, man. I, I can name you a ton of guys, man, but that's just how it goes when, when you're rooting for this team, man. Yeah, it's, that, it's, it's sad, bro. <laughs> sad state <laughs> of affairs, It's affairs, sad. It's sad. Sad state of affairs, man. Um, let, Let's get into to your journey. Yes, sir. You know, right, right now you – Producing content for for multitude of platforms, um, Bleach Report being one of them. What's some of the the content that that you have uh, under your name and credits at, at Bleach Report right now? Well, so I'm a I'm a video producer right now. So like mm-hmm. for the last two years, I've been doing video production. So any type of social news that you see, like 60 second news stories, yeah. top 10 countdowns, when we have talent, celebs, and guests come into the office, or we go on location, mm-hmm. we produce our our part of our original series in our circuit on our circuit division um and i do just a lot of original content before that i w- i started in our social moments team which mm-hmm. creates the original graphics and video content that you see on social w- in the world of sports and pop culture so i'm trying to think what what's some of the things well I was one of the producers on the. Um, I don't know if you saw the the Nick Zion Wrecking Room thing that we yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, yeah, I was in it too. Went into the room yeah, yeah, bashing stuff. Trying, that trying was to, your idea. It, it was the team idea. Okay, it was a team okay, idea. Okay. Like I don't, I don't take credit for anything. It's all team okay. stuff. But I was one of the people who was producing on it. It came out of my team, mm-hmm. and um, you know, it was trying to exercise the demons of Nick's past. And clearly, <laughs> we we did just enough to get three. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. we did just enough to hold off that. Yo, bro, when um, New Orleans and Memphis jumped into the top, it, it four, was crazy. And man. then the Lake, I was like, Yo, yeah. you gotta be <laughs> fucking kidding yeah, me. The Lakers yeah, yeah. again. It was I crazy, was sick, man. bro. I was sick. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. So that's one thing. That's one thing I did. Um, one other thing that I I produced was yeah, I don't know if you saw we had the baby in and he was mm. guessing the baby picture. So it was the baby yeah. on babies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was some. That's, that's something that anytime I can infuse my passions with what I do at work yeah. and part of our culture is I'm always gonna be down for it. So when he yeah. came in, remember somebody was like, "Yo." We have an idea to like have him look at baby pictures because you know he's the baby, <laughs> and the people were laughing. I was like, "No, that's it." And I was like, yeah. "So I was like, yo, is it's, that it's, how those it's, ideas come about? Is it just like on a whim? We we just you and your team is just sitting there like." Well, I I, I can't <clears throat> divulge yeah, of course, of what course, we do, but I just say like I work with a lot of talented people, yeah, and they, yeah. and they have some of the best ideas in the world, and and I I think one of my best attributes is. I know how to name stuff. Mm-hmm. So like like in anything that I do, I sometimes stuff just comes to me and I'm like that's it. So when they when I when I'd heard the idea, I was like, yo, it's it's the baby on babies. Like I need to produce this. <laughs> I, I was like, yo, I need I was like, please I need to produce this and right. I had a good time. So um those were two those are two recent things that mm-hmm. I I produced that I'm extremely proud of. One of the things that another thing and it was I want to say 2018 summer, the year LeBron signed with the Lakers. Yeah. I went to summer league, and for our IG stories, I asked all the Laker fans there at summer league the question: What does LeBron have to do to be a better Laker than Kobe? Mm. And that was like one of the things that I was super proud of because I was out there, I was interviewing people, and it helped become the catalyst for a lot of stuff that we do on stories now. Mm-hmm. And we're at a point now where we're not. We're not immune and we're not surprised when other people follow us and bite our style. Yeah, yeah. So it was like le- being, being right. So being an industry leader and, and being able to do stuff where I put it out there and it was like one of our best performing things mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be, whatever metrics, whatever. So that was one of the things where I was like, yo. I'm I'm proud I did that because it was something that um you know I do like the hosting thing outside of BR like I'm, I'm a media personality outside of there so mm-hmm. being able to talk to the people ask them interview them and then produce and edit and put it out um put it out for for our audience to consume and them actually liking it yeah. it, it those are three things that recent things that I'm proud of yeah. You you mentioned the um, early when we were talking like back early next days you were talking um kind of just the evolution of yeah. media. And now Bleacher Report is kind of, I mean, it's at the top. It's at the top of the heap. I mean, I don't even look at ESPN no more. Now you're just checking your, 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 your Bleacher Report notifications mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so on. 
Uh, and now with the with the comment section, it's almost like a, it's its own social media platform. So oh, Bleacher yeah. Report is becoming yeah, Bleacher Report Live and so on. How, what do you think about the impact that a Bleacher Report is kind of having on on these younger generations now, the Gen Zs, the, the, the millennials, and so on? Well, we're I think that um, for what we do at BR, we we are this generation's ESPN mm-hmm. Sports Center and all of that because before. You know, when you wanted to know what was going on in the world, you locked in the sports center. Yeah, you locked top locked 10, in, top in, 10. We want to know, seeing Stuart Scott, Stuart yeah, Scott yeah, and Rich Eisen yeah, telling yeah. me what, what's really good yeah. in the world of sports. Now, you just wake up, open our app, you get in all that information, and it's convenient and it's right to you. You get to see all the highlights that you want. You get to curate the experience that right. you want to have as a sports right. fan. And also throughout through our app and all the platforms, you're actually connecting with fans like you who talk like you, who love the game like you. And then you may meet other people. It's legit social networking. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And, and this is something that's been going on in the world of the Internet for years. Like I remember... In the blog era, I used to go to Narite and and yeah, and and, 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 right. and the yeah, Narite yeah, comment yeah, section. Yeah, yeah. I think that um it, I think Joe Budden had said it once years ago, where he was like, Narite's the type where you could post uh you could post a mixtape song and there are the comments talking about the new movie that just came out, <laughs> and you're like, yo, what the fuck? Like, and it's just yeah. like that's just I I really appreciate that era because it was literally like the lunchroom, like a, a like a cipher of conversation mm-hmm, within the mm-hmm. comments that just would evolve. And I remember in that era, people would take the, the conversation and go to the next post and go to the next post and just keep talking. And it'd be like the same two cats right, beefing. Right, right. In the- <laughs> and, then, and then I remember one point, they're like, yo, SK, put up the new post. Like, this the <laughs> comment section getting too long. Like, yo, and so it's, it's an evolution of conversation mm-hmm. of what people enjoy, enjoy like things people enjoy. Yeah. So um, I think, I for me, I think, being there for years and just seeing the effect, we're we're making it easier to be a sports fan. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like we're 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 trying to we're trying to facilitate that and get that directly to you. So that's that's what it is. Yeah. And I also think the way that you guys integrate with pop culture, you know, the trends and kind of overlay that with some of the top sports stories. I, I think that's great. Yeah, I, I man, like what you, you guys know, are doing. It's, it's 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 more than a catchphrase. You know what I'm saying? Like we are we are what the culture is and that's what we try to be and and you know that it's a heavy burden you know what i'm saying because you want to be able to remain authentic and be able to <clears throat> excuse me remain authentic remain authentic to yourself remain authentic to the culture and be able to present stuff in a way that's not whack it's yeah. not not trite not overwrought with clichés and shit like that like you want to be real and that's what we strive to do every day. What's up with the Taco Fall and Caruso hype train, man? I feel what like you, you guys are halfway responsible. These guys are now some of the top vote getters in the All Star game, man. What do you think about you know Bleacher Report's kind of impact on on, on uh, kind of hyping these guys up a little bit? Um, I would say so. I was watching um, High Noon and. Bomani Jones, they had asked him a question about the Rooney rule, and he was like, yo, why are you asking me? Why don't you ask them? Because they're the one with the problem, not mine. I would tell you ask the fans. I you will not you will not and not even talking from a talking from a fan perspective, Mm -hmm. right? I'll go into I'll go into comment sections of of brand X Mm -hmm. and fans will be like, Oh my god, another one of these posts, another one of that posts. I can't, I can't um XYZ. And I'm like, well. Clearly, we're we're you know this is the conversation going on. Right. I don't right. think I don't think anything. I think that with with what we do and what what you know any type of conversation, these guys are a topic of conversation. So, you know, we're, we we're talking about we're talking about what the what the fans are talking about, and you see it across all media. Like when when you see like like you telling me that a Male pattern bald white dude with a with a headband that's throwing it like he's peak with a Jeff Van fucking haircut. right that's Killing throwing it. it like he's the 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 second coming of Vince Carter yeah, and whatnot yeah. isn't interesting yeah. then I don't know what to tell you you know what I'm saying so it's like you know I, I don't know what to tell the fans like I don't think I think that media in general 
does contribute by amplifying, but mm-hmm. we're amplifying the thing about when you think about the technical definition of what amplifying is, you're taking a signal and making it stronger, yeah. right? Who created the original signal? It's true. We're just amp- we're just amplifying what Sending we see. You know message. what I mean? That's, it's just message. it's just a yeah. Don't shoot the don't shoot the messenger. Yeah. And you know what? We're all and that's the thing about sports in this time. If we're not just about X's and O's anymore. Like fans aren't about that. Like you, you go to you go to um, you go to Bleach Report. You hear anybody talk like anybody like um, uh, uh, involved with it talk. Like we tell you, like it's more than that now. Like fans are into fashion. Fans are into kicks. Fans are into music, and all of that culture permeates through the sports world. And it has yeah. since sports has all been around. It hasn't just been, especially in the modern era. Mm-hmm. It hasn't just been. Hasn't just been about sports, right? right. So, yeah, you're gonna get that. But I, you know, I think I think everything usually falls the way it falls. Mm-hmm. And and to me, it's it's like, I one of my one of my boys always says, talk about what you like and not what you don't, because you should be driving energy towards what you like. Right, so right. I think all fans should do that. Like you don't need a you don't need a media outlet to amplify your voice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? TV, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Support the fans by the fans. Subscribe to the channel right now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now that that's interesting, man. But yeah, they they're at you know the top of the list of some of these all star uh, ballots, man. Well, I, I need to see my guy well, Mitch well, up there. I need Marcus Morris on well, there. Well, you know, well, maybe a little Randall. I'll I'll say this, and I'll say this. They're not. They're not. Um, they're not at the top of the list. No, nah, I wouldn't say the top of the list. But they're on the and, list. And they're and and, list. and a couple of things. One is just fan voting. Mm-hmm. So you're talking to someone who saw, who was it? A European player mm-hmm. who was getting so many votes that it it was to the point where if it was the old fan voting way, like right. where it was just a fan, he would have got in. Yeah. So, you know, I think Caruso is like sixth mm-hmm. in the West and, and Taco Fall is like seventh or eighth. I mean, yeah. you know. And 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 these are these are fans of those fan bases. Yeah, yeah, Let, let's true. keep it real. And, and you know, Boston, 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 LA. LA like it is what it is, what yeah. it is. You know, but I think it's fun. It's that fans are making their voices heard because you know what, the All Star Game is about the fans. So if the fans want to see true. Alex Caruso and Taco Fall, don't yeah, be mad. True, be man. be mad at those fans that want to see it. Yeah. Well, the, the game is the game has been terrible anyway for the last like twenty years. So you might as well let them in. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like the new format, though. I, I do, do like, like the, the new, new format, format with the captains. I do yeah. like it because the West is so stacked, especially with Kawhi over there now. You got LeBron over there now. Quietly, maybe, maybe with stars, there. but when you talk about teams, quietly, yeah. that gap is closed. Well, you got Toronto, certainly. You have the Bucks. If you look Miami's at the records, well. if you look at the records, right, I think – the East still has, I think, the seventh and the eighth seed mm-hmm. currently are are below five hundred. But in the West, the eighth seed is below five hundred, and that's yeah. the first time in a long time you could say that the eighth that all eight Who's seeds that aren't in the above. West, right? That's OKC. Nah, mm-hmm. OKC is seventh. I yeah. forgot who the eighth. I I can't remember who the eighth is off the top, but I know I know they were like a game or two under five hundred, mm-hmm. right? And that's the first time in a while I could remember where eight seed was under 500. So, yo, it may not seem like that because the team with the best record resides in the East, the Bucks, yeah. right? And they've been beating Western teams. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't have it off the top of my head, but I'm sure that East versus West head number, head-to-head, head, I, head, I think it's close. Like, yeah. I, the gap is slowly closing. And over the next few years of free agency, depending on where the stars go, because you even close. think about it, a lot of the stars in the West are mature, like they're they're the older. Old, yeah, you know what I mean? Guys. They're older, mm-hmm, established mm-hmm, stars. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of a lot of the young guys in the East, oh, they're on their way. Yeah. So I would love to see where the, if everybody stays in their respective conferences, where yeah, the distribution see, is. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting, man. Now you're also a wrestling head. Yes, sir. Also wrestling. Now, do you do you handle the 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 wrestling stream on Bleacher Report? Is that separate? So team? I don't. I don't actively post in the like I don't post on social media like we got our our teams for that mm-hmm. but clearly I'm a fan and I contribute to it so I'm Back a part of it I still I right, full disclosure I still watch today's just out of history and legacy to back and day but obviously you can't touch 80s 90s those, those are my days you 
you just don't have the 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 the, the characters, man. You sure? It was, it was about the characters, the pageantry. You, you sure? Man. Like, who who was your brand back in the day? Were you WWF fed, WCW? I, I mean, I was. I'm from New York, so yeah. I was mostly WWF. But yeah. I used to. I was one of the few heads that was watching WCW, like yeah. when it was growing, like before Nitro. I was okay. watching WCW, okay. like when it used to come on Saturday I was late morning. To WCW, Superstation, Super WCW, TBS, TBS and everything. Superstation, yeah, yeah, yeah. WCW. Like Definitely. I was watching that. I just you don't you just don't have them characters. First of all, steroid era completely changed everything, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're a little kid and these dudes is like looking like superheroes, like that's what you know what I mean made made you watch. I, I'll say because this. they were larger than life characters. A lot of that is your nostalgia talking yeah. and, what, and what you. But when you talk about the actual product, mm. I would say that the wrestling in this era is way better than it was in the attitude Talent era. Wise. Yes, yeah, I, I, actual, I would agree with the that. Definitely. Wrestling. I yeah. think the characters are larger than life. I think this generation, you have someone like a John Cena, yeah. right? Who is like this generation's Hogan, this generation's right. uh, The Rock and Stone Cold. And I think that the reason why those guys were able to blow up so much is that you were in an era where wrestling just was was... Hogan brought it to the mainstream, but in the 90s, there was such a confluence of entertainment. Like, mm -hmm. that's when it became sports entertainment. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, when they used to, people used to actively watch it, and nobody gave a fuck what media said. Yeah, yeah. So, you had to be a part of it. And I think it's cyclical. So, now it's hot to be a wrestling fan again. Like, it's, it's, it's in vogue now to be a wrestling fan again. So, that's why you're seeing it, and a lot more of their stars are are um what's the term a lot more a lot more of their stars are able to cross over into movies into tv right, and to right, do right. all of that than anybody there before yeah. so while we got we had a lot of legends in the in the attitude era i'm not yeah. gonna lie i would say that this era has the stars has the stars has the wrestlers and and has the quality of the product yeah. that i think a lot of that because yo the, the Monday Night Wars brought a lot of bad TV, like, in retrospect, that did not age well. Yeah. Like, people, they were throwing stuff at the wall to make <laughs> sure it's important. Because all in the space of competition, because you had right, to. Because right, right, right. otherwise, you didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. So now, so now I think, you know, there's still competition. It wasn't as competitive as it was in the 90s. Yeah. But with the globalization in the way, the globalization of the world, the way communication has evolved so that... The world has gotten smaller and mm -hmm. we're more connected and we have more options with streaming and streaming services mm -hmm. and social media to be exposed to all types of wrestling. This is the era to be a wrestling Thanks fan, so. man. I mean, you had thousands of people in the U.S. watching New Japan Pro Wrestling, yeah, 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 Wrestle yeah. Kingdom at 2 a.m. in the morning Eastern, mm -hmm. 11 p.m. Pacific, right, sure. watching it. And live tweeting it. Yeah, like, this yeah. This is just a different era, big. man. That was big. Who, who's your top five Mount Rushmore, man? All time. Top right now. Without even Ooh. thinking. Right now, right now, right now. All right. I'd say Stone Cold, mm -hmm. The Rock, Ric Flair, okay. Undertaker. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> N-words disqualify Hogan from going on my <laughs> Mount Rushmore. I, I yeah, get yeah, it, yeah. but I get it. But if, if 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 he wasn't a racist, then maybe he would be on my uh, on yeah. my Mount Rushmore. But that fifth one, my, my, the, that fifth spot, whew. well, Mount Rushmore only has four heads, I know. bro. But, that's but, four but if you wanted small. my top, right, 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 right. You, you added another head on top, lot, like lot, right. So if 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 you ask me for my fifth one. You know, you know who I'll say. Um, damn. How about Chris Jericho. Huh? How about Chris Jericho? Yo, Chris Jericho's nice, man. Chris Jericho's nice, man, and he got longevity. You know, you man. know what? You know what? Yeah, I, I, I would, I would, nice, I, would I would put, I would put Chris Jericho up there. Like he, he, he. You know, you got you. you peace to Bret Hart. Peace to Shawn Michaels. Peace to a lot of people. But, yeah. but Chris Jericho has throughout the years reinvented Back. himself over and over and saying. over yeah. again yeah. you gotta respect it yeah, so I, I i would yeah i, I would say i would say uh, i'd put y2j up there too see it's 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 a hard list obviously because there's so many guys but also like it's hard to kind of separate the, the true, true true talent like the in-ring talent mm -hmm. to more the entertainers like to me hulk hogan he wasn't the in-ring talent 
You know what I mean? Right, right. He was he was more of an entertainer. He was like, an entertainer. Was a was a phenomenon. Right. It wasn't a, a um an elite wrestler. Facts, but facts, facts. yo, if Hulkamania doesn't happen, wrestling course, isn't as big as it is now, that's true. No and that's a fact for, for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? All things considered, I would say definitely Stone Cold. Because that was like you in your prime. I'm in high school years. Yeah, you yeah, jumping yeah, off the locker, yeah, yeah, catch your yeah. homie with a stunner. The stutters, the you know stutters, I mean? bro. Like, definitely stole And anybody cold, can man. catch it. Anybody yeah. can get it at any time. <laughs> you know what I mean? The high school days is crazy with that. Then uh, definitely The Rock. I would say Shawn Michaels. I would definitely say Shawn Michaels because I respect it. he also was able to reinvent himself, you know, Rocket Days, so, so on and yep. so forth to the end. Got to go with Sting, man. I got to go with Sting. Sting was that dude. Lee, you no. Know, we from the A, man. That's WCW territory. <laughs> Sting was that dude, man. You got to give Sting that that credit, man. <laughs> I like Sting. Yeah. I think we overrate Sting. <laughs> <laughs> and it hurts me to say it because I hate when people say overrate, but it's like I think he was a good worker. I think he was great for the yeah. WCW days. I'd like to hear who your other two are and see who gets left off. For so Sting? I said, I said Stone Cold, Shawn Michaels, I said, Shawn Michaels, I said The Rock, Sting. Oh, okay, so you said The Rock and Sting. Yeah. So Austin, Michaels, Rock, yeah. Sting, and who's the fifth? Oh, go. wait, what, who did I? Who, uh, my bad. Mm-hmm. I said, I said Hogan. I said, I said Austin Flair. Flair, you said. I said Flair, Flair right? Yeah, Austin yeah. Flair, um, Rock. Rock, Undertaker, and Jericho, right? All right, yeah. cool, cool. I just want to make sure. Yeah, Jericho's be my last. So you, I'm leaving on the table. You're okay. That I respect that. <laughs> You're leaving Sting off. You're leaving Ric Flair off for Sting. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Ric Flair was a legend. Don't get me wrong. What does Sting do better than Ric Flair? Yo, Sting Sting was just nice. He, used to, he was he would <laughs> yo, beat. That's he how you beat, know. That's how you know they beat Ric Flair. That's how you know when they don't have an answer. He but he listen. says, yo, they just nice. Yo, just Sting nice is not a quantitative. Flair, man. It's not a listen, quantitative characteristic. Because Sting used to always beat Ric Flair, man. What? Yeah, of course. He always. Of course he did. He beat him like once or twice, nah, bro. Man. He beat Ric Flair for yo, the belt. He beat I Ric Flair wish. for the belt. Yo, that when was you what? get when you get to. When you get to twenty thousand, you gotta hire a stat person, an in stat person nah. to break it down right now. Sting didn't. Sting didn't. Who, who think, do you, you win think, his first you championship think, again? I don't know that off the top of my head. I won't say that. But if it was Flair, cool. I will say this: You think that head head to head all time, Sting has more wins over Ho- over Flair than Flair has over Sting? Yeah, I'm pretty head sure. Head. Yes. Yeah, if if y'all are listening live, are you monitoring the comments and all of that nah, right this now? Ain't this is recorded. This is recorded. Oh, I thought you said. Oh, okay, nah, okay. I thought it was. A, I thought it was a live stream yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Nah, um, now nah, I was gonna say if if like whoever watches this, I I'm pretty sure that's not the case head to head all the time. I, I think. But 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 yeah. that's your perception yeah. that that Sting was always beating Ric Flair. Listen, Ric Flair has. Who, who has the most championships right now? So John Cena or, or um, Ric Flair? Flair and Cena are tied at 16. There's no doubt about it. He's at the top. I'm just talking about my favorites. I got you. Okay, so these are your favorites. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 this, yeah, your, yeah, this is your subject, yeah, subject. Yeah, yeah. No, this is, this no is doubt. completely subjective. Subjective. I'm talking about to the days I was watching. Okay, heard you. You know what I mean? And heard I caught you. WCW late. All... Word, 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 word. Yeah, I caught WCW late. And from what I recall, he was beating Ric Flair I, at I, that okay. time. All right. You, I was just, ah, uh, yeah. It's so just, that's, uh, that's my list. I'm going Stone Cold. I'm going to Rock. I'm going to Shawn Michaels. Yes, sir. Chris Jericho, and I'm going. I'm going Sting, man. Okay. That, okay. That's it. I'm going Sting, man. No doubt. Um, what else, man? You also the host of Power After Hours. Yes, sir. So, full disclosure, man. I've been watching Power straight through, mm-hmm. from the beginning to the end. I lost a lot of hope in, in the show, <laughs> man. I'll tell you. Are you just powering through the yeah, last four? I'm just pushing through You're pushing just to through? see what's happening because between the acting, the mm. you know some some of the scenes, that you just like, how does you. this even happen? I hear you. You know what I'm saying? Especially this season, you. the acting was just some of it was just so forced. But I did think when it came back on the after the the break, mm-hmm. I thought this last episode, the Dre episode, you know, Ghost has been shot. Right. I feel like this Dre episode. Was well done. Mm-hmm. I thought it was well written. I thought it was was it was one of the the better ones I've seen in a while. Right this season alone, because I thought it gave you more insight into who he was, gave you some more background information. I kind of like that they're doing that because I didn't know how they were gonna play this out after Ghost being shot. Mm-hmm. The fact that they're now it seems like they're gonna go into each yeah. suspects, you know, kind of what they were doing prior to or maybe afterwards after Ghost being shot. So yeah. 
thought the Dre episode was interesting because you got that background, like who his mom was, you know, his baby mom, his kid, him trying to have a better life for himself, so on. You saw the two um, uh, Tommy's henchmen. Yeah, yeah, who's locked yeah. Up. Two bit in spank. Right, yeah. two bit in spank. They, you know, their storyline kind of coming out. And then Dre ultimately gets his, mm-hmm. man. So I, I thought that was cool, man. What, what, what's your thoughts on on how this thing is, is going to end? Well, well, first off, you can always hear my thoughts on the Power After Hour podcast. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wherever you listen to podcasts, listen to me and listen to my, my co-host Chrissy Bree. Um, when, as far as how I think it's going to end, I have no clue. I'll say I echo everything that you said about the show. Mm. I think... Watching these episodes from the perspective of the suspects and them being able to further develop the characters and give them motive, give them purpose, and to see from... Because I think one of the writers said it on Power, the Power After Show. You're, you're seeing the episode 10 from how they saw it. Yeah. So you're, ca- you're you're getting all the stuff that happened in the background and then certain interactions how they saw it. Right. Not how um not how Ghost saw it, right? So we got everything from Dre even to like a little bit of the pathology of how he got to how he got to. Like that's that scene with his moms. Those scenes were powerful, dog. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got like salute to Rotimi. like he really brought it out. Like I thought Dre was a Dre to me was the ghost come up story that ghost yeah. should have been mm-hmm. like a dude that was on the corner who had the aspirations of being the top dog where I think ghost, it kind of just happened. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He had those aspirations and he would have got it. Only problem was everybody caught on to what he was. Mm-hmm. And the only reason you mess with Dre like that was if you had, it was like a, um, Lose lose proposition. Mm-hmm. I think I forget what it's in um, Star Trek is like the co- the 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 Kobayashi Maru or something like that. Um, but where it's like whatever choice you make is the wrong choice. Those are the type of situations where if you need Dre, you got him in, and that's the reason why he got killed in the end because they finally cornered him finally and they got... wasn't trying to hear it, yeah, yeah. right? But I he think he was always a survivor though. Dre was always slipping. Bro, he from... should have been out of here. Out of there, he should have been out of here like the end of season yeah, four, yeah, yeah, yeah. beginning of season five. And the mm-hmm. fact that he survived four episodes before the series ends, mm-hmm. that's a testament to his character and, and how he was yeah. able to move. Yeah, yeah. Now, if they continue to write like this and give it from everybody's perspective, I think the series is going to end well. Mm-hmm. But I also think we're at a point in the series where everybody's fed up. You know how it's like you get to a point whether you're on a project, let's say you're doing a group project mm-hmm. and you got to deal with people being late, people not showing up, people not carrying their weight, mm-hmm. and you're just ready to present. And it's just like, yo, man, I'm just ready to get this over with. Once it's off the table, a uh, uh, weight has been lifted off my shoulders and I'm good. That's how I feel the frustration in the fan base, the trepidation, the confusion as to why the show is so inconsistent. Like, I saw some people saying that this episode was whack, and that's when I knew they just got to oh, run through. Good. They just got to yeah. run through whatever their plan is, yeah. hope they stick the landing um, at the finale, and then roll into yeah. their next show. Like, that's really what it's going to be, because I think at this point, fans fans have already decided we're watching this all. Right, right, right. So whatever y'all do, y'all could, y'all could turn into Fast and Furious at this point and, and, and start doing heists. <laughs> we're watching it until the series yeah. ends because now, now we have an investment, right? Mm-hmm. We need to know who shot Ghost, and we need to know who's going to survive at the end. That's yeah. really the biggest investments that True. you have. True. I was surprised. that I thought he was just shot, but on the Dre episode, he's watching TV in the gas stations and say James and Pax has been slain. So now you find out that Ghost is dead. dead. Yep. So that's even more interesting, man. I, I don't know confirmed. how this is going to play. At least confirmed on out. TV. Yeah, at, least com- <laughs> uh, at least confirmed on TV. Right. I don't know who this is going to be, man. I would expect the next few to be, it's Angela's sister's going to be next. Right. I would expect probably Tate to be the one after that. Mm-hmm. But you still don't know why, because Tate paid Dre to, to do the hit, but then... He's also walking to right. So truth. why is he going to truth? Right. You know what I mean. So that was interesting. I, like I said, uh, it is interesting. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be a twist or anything. Let me ask you: when, 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 um, when Dre's homie came home and they were in the warehouse and Jason's 
homies and them came through. Did Jason's driver get killed in that shootout? I don't remember. I can't remember. Because I was always thinking, like, he should also be a suspect because he's the one that gave Jason the gun when he went to go meet Ghost. Like, yo, watch this dude. Right, but that's the thing. You think about it. If he gave Jason a gun and was like, yo, protect yourself, but he did Jason didn't take it. Right. That's, that's right. why he was yeah, yeah. that's why he got killed because he yeah. didn't take it. He right, didn't have right. a he didn't have a piece on him. Yeah. So he doesn't take the gun. He ends up getting killed. You knew he had smoke with Dre. Two plus two does not equal avocado. You already <laughs> know he's a suspect. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that's where I think that's where I think it, it was with his driver. Yeah. It's gonna be interesting to see if it play out. I mean, I feel like Tommy would be too obvious. You know yeah. what I mean? It has to be yeah. some sort of twist. Well, like, is well, it a ghost of Canaan? I don't, I don't know, man. Is Canaan really <laughs> dead? It's fifty all along. Jump out the box, like. Well, um, <laughs> so Courtney Kep has already said that it's one of the, it's, it's one, one of the of seven. The, yeah. Well, now six because you know Dre's out of here, right, so we know it's right, not him. Right, right. So one of them did it. There's no swerve. Mm. One of them pulled the trigger. Mm. So I, I hope that's what it is because yeah. she told the fan base that. You know what I mean? Right. So if that is what it is, then it's cool. But um, I still say my top two is uh, Tariq or Tasha. Mm. Those are my top two. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's Paz. I don't think it's Tate. Um, my dark horse is Sax. But I feel like if it's Sax, people are going to riot. <laughs> yeah. If it's Sax, people are going to riot. But that's my dark horse. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's Tasha and Tariq. What I, I, what I think happened is... Maybe one of them goes to shoot him. The other one tries to stop him, and, he, and a gun yeah, goes yeah, off yeah, and hits him and kills him. Goal. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, but yeah. if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I, I feel like it wasn't like a straight, I shot right, you. Right, I think right. something happened right. beforehand. Wrestling for the gun. And right. Then, and then like, I think shot. the final episode, I think the final episode is going to be longer where it's down to, like, three or four suspects. It's mm-hmm. kind of like um, Rhythm and Flow, yeah. where you got down to, like, th- like three or four in the final episode, mm-hmm. and I think they're just going to, one by one, pick each other off. Right. Like, you'll see it's not this person, it's not that person, and then we'll find out who it is, and then what the after, and then the aftermath, and, and then the aftermath might be um, rolling into the, book those, two. Yeah, those yeah. spin-offs. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. It's going to be interesting, man. Definitely going to be interesting, bro. Well, listen, man, I, I definitely appreciate you coming on, talking Knicks, a little Bleach Report, wrestling, power, everything, man. Yes, sir, man. yes, sir. Um, what's next for you as we kick off 2020? What, what's on uh, What's on Jeff Johnson's agenda in terms of just content creating, digital media, and whatever stops you at right now? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still still um, going to be a Bleach Report, you know, doing my, my video production thing, so that's going to be good. And I have a lot of... Uh, still doing power after hours. So we'll we'll be covering the the spinoff show too. Mm. So I'm gonna still be doing that from podcasts. And really, other than that, you know, I, I come on dope shows like yours and different stuff like that. And I'm I'm kind of wor- working on a few things for myself, like new creative stuff and endeavors that I'm I'm thinking of. I'm always I'm in my head a lot, so I'm always thinking of new ideas and things that I can implement and things that I want to do for me. Um, so hopefully you see me, you see me in cool stuff. So, uh, that's really what it is. No doubt, man. Well, listen, man, best of luck to you. Yes, sir. Definitely appreciate, appreciate you coming you. on, no man. Doubt. Hope you uh, come back on in the future, bro. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, man. All right. Jeff Johnson in the building. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share these videos. Leave a comment in the chat. Let us know what you thought about our conversations today. We touched on a little Knicks, a little wrestling, a little power. Leave us a comment in the chat and, uh, and I'll be sure to reply back to you guys, man. Peace.